Welcome back to the Reflector channel. I'd like to introduce you to an old friend. This is an Orion X-T6i telescope. It's a six inch Dobsonian telescope with push to capabilities. If you've seen my video on how I restored an abused telescope to a good as new condition telescope, well, then you've seen this before. And in case you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to it down in the description box. Now in the original video, I didn't tell you the rest of the story. After the original video posted, this took on an adventure of its own. I found a new owner that has been taking this guy on camping adventures for almost two years. We'll call him Mr. A. Now, Mr. A contacted me recently and he said it's about to go out on some more adventures and he wanted to know if I could take a look at it and perhaps do any service or maintenance if it needed any. Needless to say, I was very excited to take a second look at this telescope that I'd had so much fun restoring. Let's go ahead and give it the reflector service. One of Mr. A's concerns was that some of the collimation screws had worked themselves loose during the last leg of one of their trips. So that's actually not too uncommon, especially if you're driving along a lot of bumpy dirt roads. Uh, so before we do anything on this telescope, I want to make sure that the mirror is, is safe and secure and, and clean. So let's go ahead and remove the mirror cell. This mirror cell was attached to the tube with four four millimeter Phillips head machine screws. Uh, bigger telescopes will have more, but four is pretty common for a six inch telescope like this. It's a little bit dusty, but uh, not bad at all. Let's go take it over to the workbench. Here is the mirror. It's still secured in the internal mirror cell. First of all, let's just blow some of this dust off. See if we can see that dust. Oh yeah, that's coming off pretty well. We may still end up cleaning this, but for now, let's just get rid of the dust. It's actually not too bad. All right, so I'm gonna carefully turn it over. And remove these two screws. And any springs. Okay, it's right there. This looks pretty good. I don't think we need to do anything with this. Set that aside. The mirror. Let's see. Let's go ahead and clean this mirror. We'll just do a quick clean. I have a whole video dedicated to how to clean these, so I'm just gonna show you an abbreviated version of that. But first we gotta remove these screws. This is one of those situations where you have to be very careful. Uh, go slow and hold your screwdriver securely. As such, you should never, ever use an electric drill driver on these screws. All right, we're going to set this aside for a minute. I'm going to reassemble the cell holder with the base. Here we have our three collimation screws, our three lock screws, three springs. Let's reassemble this part. Put the springs in their seats. Then take the actual mirror cell. It has these three threaded studs right there. We're going to place these through the springs. Like that. Then we're going to turn it over. We're going to take the collimation screws, put these on. There's three of these, so now we're going to tighten these down. How much should we tighten it down? Well, that's a good question. You want to tighten them down quite a bit. The important thing is these springs. You don't want to tighten them so far down that, that the spring gets totally squished. I would say uh, tighten it all the way down and then release it about, oh, an eighth of an inch or so. Uh, for me, that's about the thickness of my pinky. So I'll put that with all of these. Uh, during collimation, uh, this will all work itself out. You don't want it to be too loose, uh, but this is pretty good. And now we'll put the collimation lock screws in. All right, so this is all back together. That's good as new. Uh, in this case, the mirror cell is flush with the outer ring. Let's go wash that mirror. First, we'll add some rubbing alcohol 
And then some Dawn dish detergent, or as I think our UK viewers call it, Fairy Brand dish detergent. Now I'm setting the mirror in the solution. Now I'm going to wait a few minutes. Now I'm going to soak some of the cotton balls in the solution and gently rub them in straight lines over the mirror. And then I'll rotate it 90 degrees and repeat that process. Now I'm actually following the recommended method by Orion. When you're all done, you lift it out and you pour some distilled water over the mirror surface. And that should wash away the sudsy water and debris. Uh, and when you're all done with that, you can set it aside. Typically, you'll put it at an angle to let it dry. But uh, I like to actually uh, set it down and use the corners of a paper towel to soak up those little drops. It just makes the process go a little bit faster. Since I had all the equipment out, I thought I would wash the secondary mirror as well. You have to be a little bit more careful though because I don't want to dip the entire assembly into the water. I'm trying to only treat the front surface of the mirror. Uh, you saw me pour distilled water there over the front of it and now I'm trying to get all the drops off and I think I'm actually going to use the squeeze bulb to get uh, most of this off and it works pretty well. Now, while we had this water here, I went ahead and cleaned the dust cap. It had a nice layer of camping dust on it uh, from some fun adventure, I'm sure. But it looks good as new now. Now that the optics are removed and cleaned, I'm going to remove the tube and give this a scrub down with some Windex. While I was cleaning, I noticed that the Velcro was not in the best of shape, especially on the back of the hand controller, which I don't show in this video, but it needed replacing. Fortunately, I had a lot of Velcro supplies from the radio controlled airplane hobby that I'm involved in. And it worked really well. Now I will put the secondary mirror back in. All right, now I'm going to reassemble the primary mirror. Let's drop it in here on very carefully onto these pegs. There are marks on here from where it was mounted. I'm going to line those up best as I can like that now we're going to reattach the clips uh, again if you've seen my video on how to clean a mirror uh, I go into detail about how tight these should be and the answer is they really shouldn't be tight at all in fact they should be slightly loose All right. All right, so we're gonna put the primary mirror back in. This is our last chance to clean it. Optically, it's all reassembled. Now all we have to do is collimate and do a function test on the encoders. Before we do a big system check of the telescope, we need to take a look at the viewfinder here. And I noticed that the O-ring is pretty bad. It's actually falling apart. I think I may have actually replaced this in the first video. So I guess it has a lifespan of about two years. Let's see what happens when we pop this out. That's really in there. That does not want to come out. We got pieces of O-ring. All right, that's okay, I got backup O-rings. Let's go ahead and give this a clean. Something's loose. We'll address that here. 
Yeah, that front lens is a little bit loose. That's okay. We have a tool for that. There's two little notches in here, and I'm going to put this in the notches and turn it. That tightened it up. Oof, that was a lot of dust. Let's go ahead and clean this. Got our optical tissue. Much cleaner. And the inside is perfectly clean. You don't need to do that. And the crosshairs. Crosshairs look pretty good. Everything's tight down. I'm going to just do a quick scrub on this. This is good. Now we have to get an O-ring that fits. This is going to be tricky, but we'll give it a try. Um, they're going to be, it's going to be a tight fit. See how it goes. There you go. It's a nice tight fit. We'll call this part done. Collimation is actually a, a pretty detailed process, so I'll probably make another video sometime that shows you how to do that. But let's go ahead and uh, speed through collimating this. It's going to need some adjustment. I don't know if you can see this, but on one of the threaded lugs, uh, the little tension pin is actually coming out. Uh, I had a whole video about something like that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, squeeze that with some pliers. Look at that. All fixed. Well, here it is all cleaned up. And before we take it out to do a final checkout of the electronics, this would be a great opportunity, if you've enjoyed this video, to push that like button. Let's go ahead and take this outside and check it out. I've really grown to like the Orion Push 2 systems. The only thing it asks for when you turn it on is to point the tube vertical, and then you push the enter button. Uh, then it asks you to do a two-star alignment. Now, in this case, I start with Sirius, and once it's centered in the eyepiece, you push the enter key on the hand controller, and then you point it to the second alignment star, and once that's centered, you pick up the hand controller, and you push enter again. Now, from that point on, it's off to the races. You can search for anything, so let's have it find Jupiter. Look at that. Jupiter looks amazing. Well, I think it's safe to say that this telescope is ready for another two years of camping adventures. Many thanks to Mr. A for bringing it by to let me have a second look at it. I have to say, I think it's held up pretty well. If you haven't seen the original video that shows the very substantial restoration of this telescope, well, I put a link to it over there. But until next time, clear skies, everybody.